So you have decided to join the parade of aquarium keepers who have decided to keep predator haps. This video will answer some important questions for you, such as, are they just a fad that will fade? Are your expectations in keeping them fact or fantasy? What are the special requirements of predator haps? How are they different than mabuna, peacocks, and smaller haps. Are you prepared to support, support the special equipment, supplies, nutrition, and in particular the large aquariums that they require to maintain their health? Join me as I share my journey with predator haps. I know you will find it very enlightening. First, the one minute summary of my journey with African cichlids. My first African cichlid was an Aratus more than 40 years ago. It was basically the only African cichlid available to me at the time. I really fell in love. About 25 years ago, I decided to go from Oscars to Mabuna in a big way and really enjoyed the wide array of colors and shapes available, their habits and the fact that they seemed indestructible compared to many other aquarium fish. Then about 15 years ago came the peacocks and haps. So my aquariums quickly shifted to what I considered to be an even more interesting and colorful family of fishes. They were stunning. And over time I found a number of local breeders who raised them in their man caves, their basements and their garages. They were always healthy and expensive, inexpensive, and it was an exciting time. In fact, I did not even have a quarantine tank until one year ago, so I, since I did not experience any disease outbreaks. Then a few years ago, it seemed like all the African cichlid movers and shakers with YouTube channels were changing their aquariums out to predator haps. It reminded me of the time when I was a teenager and all my friends were dreaming about and buying muscle cars. I could feel my testosterone levels rising. Had the time for predator haps arrived for me? Was I going to call, fall for the bait? Was I going to go all in? So I decided to do an 8 foot 500 gallon aquarium build and to have 50% large haps and 50% predator haps. I had most of the large haps already and to put in place a large sump and grow bed to handle all the waste from these large fish. Here's a quick shot of uh, some of the fish in the 500. Uh, as far as predator haps, I added Aristochromus, Bucochromus, Champachromus, and Nimbochromus. Uh, those were the primary families that I added. Uh, pay particular attention to the, uh, the colors of the large haps as opposed to the colors of the predator haps. Now just as a reference point, take a look at the colors in my 340 gallon. This is an established tank, about four years old, and it's really exclusively uh, haps and a few m mabuna. And here for reference are a number of predator haps, and these are large, mature specimens, and uh, make note of the colors. So the first big difference that I've noticed after one year with predator haps is that they are less colorful, and they also need a lot of size and age to develop their colors. Now this is a very important slide if you want to understand the impact of the size of predator haps on the design and maintenance of an aquarium system. As a biologist, I reference the tables from the U.S. Department of Fisheries to determine the relative biomass between different sizes of similar shaped fish to Mabuna, peacocks, and predator haps. As you can see by this illustration, as your fish get larger, their weight increases exponentially. 
This is important because it is a direct indicator um, of how much food is required and how much waste is created by your fish. Bottom line, while not, not quite as bad as a red-tailed catfish, you can see that one 14-inch predator hap weighs in at and produces waste 28 times that of a four and a half inch mabuna. So bottom line, this means with predator haps, you're gonna have a lot of ammonia, a lot of nitrite, and a lot of nitrates produced. So what does this mean in your aquarium design? It means that you just don't throw additional canister filters at the problem of increased waste. You have to find a solution that can handle that major increase in fish waste. In the design of my system, I built a 110 gallon sump. It has the equivalent of 50. That's 50 FX6s of biomedia. I also added an aquaponic grow bed to add additional water for purification capacity so that my fish never experience an ammonia burn. Before I made the plunge into predator haps, I had 20 years where I bought Mabuna and mid-sized haps from local breeders between Chicago, Indianapolis, and Cincinnati. Over as many as 40 to 50 purchases during those years, I never had a disease outbreak, and in fact chuckled at the idea of even needing a quarantine tank. I was in for a big surprise with predator haps. I had to buy all my fish online since they were not available from local breeders. Some of the shipments came from Florida breeders. In one year of buying predator haps online, I've had three major disease outbreaks and lost over a thousand dollars worth of fish. I'll let the viewer draw their own conclusion on what is going on here. And lastly, for obvious reasons, predator haps need a higher content of animal protein in their diet, so this has to be considered in their food selection. So bottom line, the jury's still out on my long-term commitment to predator haps for the reasons I covered in this video. So what would I recommend to you? At this point in time, I would recommend staying with Mabuna, smaller haps, and peacocks, and not switching to predator haps if color and variety are important to you. If your budget is such that you cannot afford a uh, large tank, such as a 96 inch tank. If uh, you can't make the time commitment to larger fish that produce a lot more waste and need, nor need more bells and whistles to keep the water pure. If you can't commit to a sump and or grow bed to help purify the water and uh, consume all the wastes that are created by these large fish. And lastly, if selection and access to healthy fish is important to you, I, I would not consider uh, predator haps.